Anna Nicole Smith wears a floor-length royal blue gown and a full face of makeup as she stares in disbelief at the local news on a television. It is 2002, and she is in a hotel suite preparing for a party hosted by Guess, the brand that launched her from moderate fame as a playmate to iconic stardom as the face of their 1992 denim campaign. <laughs> Why do they have it? It just totally depresses people. You know those bumper stickers where it says happens and then you die? They should have it where shit happens and then you live because that's really the truth of it. This moment of poignant clarity is captured halfway through the first episode of The Anna Nicole Show, a reality series that ran on the E! Network from 2002 to 2004. The idiomatic remix of Shit Happens, Then You Die is a combination of the expression Life's a Bitch and Then You Die with the standalone Shit Happens and it's just one of the many verbal mishaps that Anna experiences on the show. It demonstrates the distance between Anna and mainstream American linguistic norms. She is close enough for her meaning to be understood but far enough off the mark to reveal herself as an outsider. The American public would keep her at this distance for the duration of her 15 years in the public eye. The life and death of Anna Nicole Smith demonstrate our hatred for anyone who dares to pursue the American dream using skills from their own class and culture of origin. She's going to be neutral, huh? I'm just going to shut up. I know nothing about nothing. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. We demand that socioeconomic migration be permitted only if the traveler promises to adopt enough white middle class values to reaffirm that we have chosen virtuous ones. But they must retain enough of their pre-migration values to make us feel charitable in our welcoming of diversity. Those who argue that Anna Nicole Smith was born in the United States and therefore disqualified from an immigration narrative are willfully unfamiliar with the entirely foreign place that our nation's poor actually live in. She did not have to physically leave a country, but she did have to arrive in what amounted to a new one. The American dream is to be pursued on strict terms dictated by a class of people who generally had the luxury of being born into a family that already achieved the dream. We want everyone to pursue good grades and obedience in school, which culminates in acceptance to an institution of learning where one can find a degree that is often more ceremonial than useful. Anna dropped out as soon as she could. Those who find fortune without those accoutrements <laughs> of middle-class respectability better have some enormous talent that got them where they are. Anna did not have any of the talents that we give any credit or credence to in America, and so Anna did not accept these terms. This alleged lack of talent is what often makes her an object of derision even after her death. She could not act. She could not sing. Even as a stripper, she did not dance especially well. But what so many find objectionable about her, I think, is her greatest strength. We accept happily ever after stories of people with untapped talent trapped in little towns and grinding poverty who chance across the right opportunity to prove themselves. But Anna would have no such chance because she had no such talent. She wanted to be famous and didn't have any of the tools or skills to make that happen. She was functionally illiterate and deeply traumatized. Yet, she made it happen anyway. She turned nothing into something. And not just a cozy middle class American life, but an empire and a seat among icons. That is skill. That is ambition. I do not hesitate to say that it is genius. That's from All the Lives I Want, Essays About My Best Friends Who Happen to Be Famous Strangers by Alana Massey. Massey? Alana Massey. Yippee. I like that. Mm -hmm. Bring it on.